Hey guys, how's it going? Warshack here. And um, as we get closer and closer to the next expansion, guys, they seemingly, they're releasing like five to 10 cards a day now. So I'll do my best to keep up with these. Um, but obviously if the card that you want me to review isn't uh, in this video, it's probably gonna be in the next one as when I'm recording this, they hadn't released or they had released while I'm recording it. Um, so just keep that in mind. So we got an exciting first card here. In my opinion, very powerful. At first, it doesn't actually look that great. Um, but then when you take a closer look and you think about it, um, it's just really, really powerful. So we have the Priest Legendary Spell. It's nine mana. Uh, summon a 1-1 one, one copy of each minion in your deck. So you're like, holy crap, that's a lot of mana. And um, you're summoning a 1-1 one, one copy. So off the bat, it doesn't really look that overwhelming, right? You're just like, eh. But the key is right now, Priest has a... Um, has a really great mechanic of not being able to pull creatures out of the uh, deck because before we had barns, right? And it would summon the 1-1 one, one copy. It could pull rage. Rage would pull a minion. But even if we just pulled like a 1-1 one, one statue and then they killed the statue, we could eternal servitude it. Because once a minion is on the board and it dies, then priests can go, you know, whatever they want to do, whether they use their spell stone to summon, you know, two to three copies or even four uh, copies of a minion that have died or four minions that have died that game, uh, depending on how much it's been powered up, plus eternal servitude. So like a card like this, right now we see um, Combo Priest, which runs like Alex draws a Mind Blast and like Anduin to, you know, chip damage. But the other priest that's floating around, that's really not that popular because it doesn't have the ability to like pull its minions out very effectively all the time. And that's OTK uh, Priest. Um, so when you have a card like this, you know, as long as you don't draw, I want to say two or three of the minions left in your deck, whether it be Malagos, Velen, Statue, Lich King, uh, maybe even a couple new big legendaries that come with this uh, set, um, being able to even pull two or three of them just to get them down so then you can use your Spellstone to be able to resummon them. Because also uh, when you play, like let's say you just play a Malagos, right, and you play against an opponent who's a Shaman or um or a mage, they can go ahead and hex or polymorph, and then you no longer are able to bring it back. So right now we're depending on using um, our Shadow Essence to summon a 5-5 version, and then they have to polymorph that one, then they play the normal version. Um, but this gives us basically another way to summon the giant minions from our deck um, without paying the premium of actually playing the single minion and giving us the ability to resummon them um, at normal stats for 7 mana, depending on, of course, how many uh, charges of Spellstone we've been able to pump up to. Uh, I'm going to fix the green screen here in a second, so give me one sec. Sorry about that. The green screen was doing some fuzzy shit, and that's because I had new t-shirts brought in. For those of you who didn't see the t-shirt, we got the Goose t-shirts in here for when the new expansion drops. Give those away on stream. I was like, why the hell is my green screen messed up right now? What in tarnation? So the next card we're going to look over is going to be a Mage Epic. It's going to be a 7 mana 5-5 five, five battle cry. Summon a random minion with cost equal to your hand size. Haven't seen that one before. So stat-wise, it's really not terrible. It does something like, when I look at a high-statted minion like this, I look at, does it do something right away? And it, it does. It summons a minion based on your hand size. As we know, uh, mages have some pretty good hands, are pretty large hands if you're playing control mage and you're in the later stages of the game. Mages also do not have any decent... Um, mid to late game minions. I mean, we've got like Syndragos, uh, Archmage and stuff, but those aren't really like typically found you know, in a normal, like, mid-range mage or, like, you know, maybe a control mage but isn't based on just solely board clears and Jaina. Like, literally, the control mage deck is just filled with a whole bunch of removal, and then if you draw Jaina early, you're fine. If you don't draw it to the end of the game, you, you're you just hurting real bad. So, cards like this kind of fit into them saying, hey, you know, we need to give mage some... We need to give a mage a decent minion between 6 and 8 that isn't a Syndragosa or Archmage, um, and it could possibly summon more minions, which is exactly what this does, and it follows the same line as the spell we saw before, the four mana, um, summon two mana, two two mana minions, and then it depends on spell power, and you can make it, you know, more. Uh, so, they're taking mage in more of a minion route, and I don't know how much I feel about, I don't, I don't really like that, because mage has always been a class that benefits from, like, a lot of spells, but I think they could have incorporated like some sort of spells that summon minions or copies of minions. You know what I mean? You're playing a spell and it no like <clears throat> you could play like Violet Teacher in your mage deck and you would have like a one mana or a two mana spell and that would summon like a two two sorcerer and that sorcerer, you know, the next spell you play costs one less. So you paid for you pay basically paid a two mana spell for a two mana two two. 
So it's not crazy and it has an effect, but you had to use a spell to summon the minion. You know what I mean? And just instead of summoning minions, because then that combos with cards like Mana Worm, it combos with cards like Violet Teacher, you know, it combos with cards that involve you having to play spells in a turn, but in the, the spells are summoning minions. So I don't really know. Um, it's a, I think this is a pretty fair card. I don't want to say it's too good. Because again, if you have no cards in your hand, you play this, it's seven mana, five, five. But then again, how many times is a control mage top decking? But it's like currently, where does this fit? It's not going in control mage. We might see like a hand mage. It could play like mol or mountain giants, play like a astronomer or astronomancer. Be interesting. Try to brew some of that up. Maybe do like odd mage. But then giant doesn't fit. I don't know. We'll have to well i don't think it's a bad card i just don't see where it fits right now with the limited cards we've been given yo bright nose nozzle crawler bright not bright nozzle crawler i just called him bright nose nozzle crawler jesus rob you need to wake up four mana uh two four mech death rattle summon a one one ooze with poisonous and rush hmm summon a one one ooze with poisonous but it's a death rattle so if it gets silenced it's so useless like, this card is good as long as it doesn't get silenced. Because the ooze is basically destroy whatever you want. Like, this card says when it dies by trading, you can then kill whatever minion you want. And I think if this card had one more attack, it would be, like, I could say it's broken. Because it's so annoying. Right now, it's still really good. I still think this card is good. Because, what like... Unless you're playing against like a druid or a mage and they're going to be able to ping off the 1-1 one, one ooze. And then also, if your turn, you can trade this into minions, finally kill it off, get the 1-1 one, one out, and then trade that. So, I mean, this is, this is a pretty solid card. This is a good mech right here. It looks a little underwhelming. You're like, eh, 4 mana, 2-4. They don't want to give like the 4 mana's 5 attack anymore, which I understand. I'm, I'm, I'm really tired of the 4 mana 5-4s. I am fucking sick and tired of those. <laughs> you don't need to be doing 5 damage for 4 mana. You know what I'm saying? With a decent ability. We've had, we've been there, we've done that, that meta is over. It's time to actually make cards like this. So, like, if it goes off, huge payoff, but you're paying, a, like, a small premium for a really good death rattle like this. Plus, let's say if you let this live on the board a couple turns, you're not sitting there dead because you're taking two per turn, but you would be dead if you're taking five a turn. So, definitely like this card a lot more than the standard 5-4s that they've been constantly printing for 4 mana, which is stupid. And it honestly looks like most of the minions this expansion, their stat line is not as high. If you look at all the minions we go over, there's there's seriously not a lot of the uh, low mana cost, super statted minions. Uh, mage card. 2-mana, uh, 2, 1 elemental, battle cry, your next spell this turn has plus 2 spell damage. Pretty solid. Whether you're using this with a spell or that, um, oh, next spell this turn, though. So basically, you play this on turn six, and you combo this with the, um, the new secret, and you get a four, you get, for four mana, you get two random four four minions. Or two random four drop minions. So for six mana, you get a two one elemental. Yeah. I can see like more of like a mid-range elemental deck. I think that's what they're pushing for. I think that's what they're going for with the this guy and then like that spell. The whole elemental thing. If this guy was a 2-2, he'd be disgusting. The 2-1 makes it so he dies to hero powers and stuff like that. Like dies to whirlwind. Anything with 1 HP is like... It, 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 you just expect it to die the following turn. <laughs> so you're basically playing this as like, maybe they kill it in the plus two spell power. Does it really matter? We'll have to see. Like, does this fit in Tempo Mage right now? Possibly, but if it just said your next spell gets plus two spell damage, I would, I would say it's good and we'll leave it at that. But it says the next spell this turn. Which means you're playing this, plus you're playing spells or whatever, which is taking up more mana. So you've got to use it all the way. So, like, you can't just play this card just as tempo. Like, you have to combo with this card. If not, this card is terrible. So this is a card that you don't ever play on turn two. Unless you're coining out, like, arcane missiles for five missiles. Which is sick. I mean, if you're playing this along with arcane missiles to clear board on turn two to get tempo, 
you know, that's pretty nice. But besides that, I don't know. I'm not that excited about this card. The fact that you have to all play it in a single turn, uh, not that powerful. But maybe there's some, like, no, nah, no. All right, yeah, it doesn't look that exciting. Cloning device, uh, two mana priest card. Discover a copy of a minion in your opponent's deck. Discover a, co okay, discover a copy of a minion in your opponent's deck. Okay. Doesn't this sound really familiar, chat? Really? Dragonoid operative? This is literally Dragonoid Operative, but in a spell form. So yeah, I, I imagine how broken that card was, chat. He was a 5-mana five 5-6 five, dragon that did this. So you're telling me... So if this cost... It, just discovering a minion in my opponent's deck is worth 2-mana, is what they're telling me right here. Then you're telling me that Dragonoid Operative was basically a 3-mana five, 5-6 dragon. That, that it had to be one of the most broken cards in the game. You're basically telling me Dragonoid Operative is legit a 3-mana 5-6 dragon. Disgusting. <clears throat> Cloning device? I don't know how good this is, uh, honestly. Like, paying 2 mana to discover a minion in your opponent's deck. Um, what minions are you going to... What If you're playing against a combo deck, right? <clears throat> and um, Or an aggro deck. You're not going to want their minions, and you're, hell of, you're sure as hell not going to want... So well, basically, whatever minion you're picking, it costs two more mana because you paid two mana to get it. I don't think this card is very good at all. I don't think this card is that great at all. It was only good with Operative because Operative could steal spells. Operative was discover a card in your opponent's deck. It wasn't discover just a minion. And I think that's what draws back this card. Like, if you could discover, like, a Twisting Nether or, like, maybe some Board Clear or Burn, but with it just being minions, not that exciting at all. I don't think that card is good. Poo poo. Uh, two mana hunter card. We haven't seen a lot of hunter cards. We have not seen a lot of hunters. Cybertech chip. Uh, give your minions death rattle. Add a random mech to your hand. This is very similar to like shaman's spirit echo and stuff like that. When the minion dies, bring a copy to it to your hand or summon a totem. So, mech hunter. Really? That's what they're going for right now. Mech hunter. I mean, it's a ton of value. Don't get me wrong. This is this is a high value card right here. Two mana is not bad either. Most of the time, stuff like this costs three. So you're getting it for one mana off, and it's probably because the deck sucks. <laughs> you're probably paying less mana for this card because the card, well, the card is good, but the 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 mech hunter with this card is probably not so good. But maybe I'm sure like there'll be like if there's like a mech hunter, they'll play like this just to play one of these, and then they'll have like three mechs out, they'll use it, and then there'll be no way that, you know, the other person can beat them because the mech just generated like more mechs. They got like the, they what is it, the llama one, the pinata, which then gave them a legendary, and that legendary was like Archmage, and then they played something else, and then now the hunter has fireballs. <laughs> and it's uh, mechs and fireballs from the mate, or from the hunter. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Sounds exciting. Moving along. This card. Oh my fucking god. Just when I thought we got away from him, chat. Five mana, two one. What does it do, Rob? The battle cry summon two one two mechs with taunt and divine shield. It summoned two Anoyotrons, chat. So they basically printed here's another really solid five drop. So right now we have Fungal Mancer. The five drop that's good if you have minions on the board. Now we have the inventor. The five mana card that's good if you have no minions on the board this card is really good really good it's good in arena it's good for free to play players it's good for any mid-range deck it's good for aggro decks this card this card is good i think this card is really really good it looks really underwhelming that's even why they gave it instead of being a 2-2 they gave it a 2-1 just because of how good they know it is so think of it anoyotrons or two mana one two mechs with divine shield and taunt you're basically getting a one mana two one that summons two of those seems pretty 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 good a lot of value in that card omega medic i don't like this card at all three mana three four battle cry if you have 10 mana crystals restore 10 health to your chris all right to restore 10 health to your hero i don't like this card because like if you're at 30 life this does nothing like this has no impact like when i the 10 ma like this is only good if you're playing an aggro deck it's turn 10 and you need to heal. I guess it's okay too if you're playing like a combo deck against like I don't know like a like a combo priest, right? They're getting ready to mind blast you down, and then you can heal for ten and go out of the range. But like, 
I don't, I don't know. I mean, I guess they, they may, all right, so they statted this one better than the other ones um, because its ability is not as powerful. So a three mana three, four, as we know, is pretty solid for a three mana card. But we've seen, you know, the four mana two sixes or the five mana two sixes or whatever with taunt. That's not that exciting. So this is like, on its own, isn't that bad for a tempo play on turn three for a priest. But at the same time, this ability really isn't that bad. So they sacrifice from its ability to being like better statted than most of the other Omega cards. I don't like it at all, though. I would have liked to see like a three mana three three or three mana three four if you have 10 mana crystals take control of an enemy minion i think that's fair you get a mind control in there for 10 mana plus you get a minion <clears throat> i think that would have been fair but whatever <laughs> this next card is so fucking meme uh two mana one one mech battle cry or pago hopper Battle Cry gained 2 2 for each other Pago Hopper you played this game. So, I mean, there's a million different ways you could play out this card to add a whole bunch of them to your deck and then hopefully draw into them. So, the first thing you see is like, you just play basically Mech Rogue. You run the card that copies more cards into your deck and whatnot. You try to copy and bounce this as many times as you can to make Pago Hopper as big as possible, right? You win through Pago Hoppers. The other way is to play the card that draws you a bunch of cards. You get two Pago Hoppers. You get two of the cards that shuffle three into your deck. You draw the remainder of your deck. You do it with the Pago Hopper. You put them back in your deck. You Valera, and you just keep playing Pago Hoppers. Eventually, you win like that, too. Um, the thing is, you have to live long enough to get the value off of your Pago Hopper. But I have a feeling that if someone can brew up the correct deck that has Pago Hopper and is able to, to like... I think Pago Hopper should be an alter like you should have win conditions with your deck like whether it be like a mid-range mech rogue right where you just win through tempo or win through burst or something like that but then you have this other game plan that like if you run out of value or if you're never going to win the value game you can switch your deck over instead of being so aggressive you go Pago Hopper style you know what I mean you have like kind of a secondary game plan that if the first one is obviously not working because your opponent's like, you know, like a freeze mage or a control mage. And there's, you know, flame strike every turn, blizzards, meteors, uh, dragon breath. There's just no way you can get creatures to stick. You just go, okay, well, if you're not going to play any minions, then I'm just going to have time to draw into what I need to make infinite pogo hoppers. And eventually these things are going to be big enough that, you know, once they get to like six sixes and eight eights and ten tens. I mean, we're talking about, think we're, we're talking basically about jades. Jade's got 1-1 one, one each time you summon him. Pago Hopper does 2-2s. Two Pago Hopper is twice as fast as a Jade, and Rogue has quite a few cards that are going to be able to let you play this, bounce it back to your hand, play this, bounce it back to your hand, or put more in your deck. And then it has tons of draw to get those cards. Plus it has Valera, which makes you so you can play two per turn anyway. So basically we have new Pago Hopper Jade Rogue. <laughs> welcome to the new meta boys <laughs> uh next card we're gonna look at is the last card of this particular review it's gonna be the star aligner seven mana seven seven battle cry if you control three minions with seven health and deal seven damage to all enemies that's including your opponent's face oh wow interesting <laughs> i mean it's a big daddy it's a big it's a high costing ability like you've got to have three if you control three minions with seven health which i'm assuming it it, it it includes itself so you need two other minions with seven health i feel like that's not that hard in a priest deck i feel like priest could do this relatively easily i think druid could do this relatively easily warrior could maybe do it some relatively easily does not seem that bad. Having two seven health minions out late game isn't out of the question. Especially when you have the, the mechs out, the, the two mana one five. That's already almost a one seven. So all you need to do is buff it a little bit and make two of them. <laughs> nah, but seriously, you got like, I don't know. And then like on top of that, like when you get two minions out that have seven health, your opponent's not going to want to develop more or put a taunts in the way because then you get to play this. So they're going to have to like, whenever your opponent has two more minions out there, it's like, it's time to do the hard removal because you got to remove one of them for sure. 
if this card is played. If this card isn't played, then no one's going to play around it, obviously. But I think in, like, you know, in a big Druid deck or something, I don't see why you wouldn't give this a go. I mean, Druid has no giant field clear. War And then Warrior just got, you know, before they only had Brawl, now they have Reckless Fury. So it's a little less, like, necessary in Warrior. But, like, a Druid deck seems pretty good. So that's a class that's missing any form of decent AoE. I mean, they have Spreading Plague, but it's not like you're not killing it. You're just making minions to defend yourself because they have a wide board. But anyway, it's a super interesting card. I like it. It reminds me of, like, Uldar. It remind, for some reason, when I looked at this the first time, it reminded me of Naruto of Planetary Devastation. I have no idea why, but literally the word planetary devastation, planetary, I don't know what it's called, but you guys, it's Payne's ability, planetary devastation, it's crazy. Anyway, for some reason that reminded me of this card. <laughs> so with that, thanks for watching. I'll try to uh, pump out another one of these because I know I missed a shit ton of cards. Like between, I, they're just releasing so many cards and I don't want to fill up one of these with like fucking 35 cards and this take 20, like, you know, 40 minutes to cover. So Thanks for watching. Uh, I'll catch you in the next review. Let me know if there's anything that uh, you really liked, uh, anything I might have missed, or anything you'd like to add on to the cards that we had covered in this discussion. So with that, thanks for watching. I'm Robert Warshak, and happy whatever the hell day it is.